Hi, my name's Paul and I'm part of Worcestershire Archive and Archaeology Service. And this film is about applying for funds. And it goes alongside a toolkit that we produced that will go into more detail and provide various links and suggestions of where to look. Now, most of us are in need of money to, to survive, to go forward, and for all sorts of things to keep us going. And that's often in short supply. One way of doing this is to apply for funds, apply to various organisations. Now, we know that this can be daunting. and We've spoken to people who, who, who think that, yes, that'd be nice, but I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. So we hope to explain and demystify and hopefully encourage you to have a go. Some people are put off by forms. So sometimes, is there anybody who you can do, who can do it with you? And as you might think, oh, it's for other people, but please don't be put off. One of the first things to think about is what do you actually want? So before applying for a fund, what would you use it for? Where do you need it? Is it for day-to-day -day things? Is it for a particular project, for the building? Have a think about what it is, what you would need, how much money you'd need, so that when an opportunity comes along, you have that information to hand. There are all sorts of different funding sources. The National Lottery Heritage Fund is one of the main ones that people in heritage think of, but there are other ones. There's Arts Council and various other arts funding. Uh, there may be local charities, grant making bodies, sometimes various organisations such as Seven Waste uh, are required to provide local funding that people can apply for. Um, local county council members sometimes have a local community fund or that might be crowdfunding. Think about who these funders are and whether you're eligible because different ones have different criteria. And also think, what do they want? And you match what they want with your own aims. And hopefully, they, you know, you can get a nice match and you're applying for, for funding for things that they want to fund. Just check about eligibility and also key application dates and decision times so that you're not rushed doing a last minute one or suddenly realise that the deadline's passed. Um, but also if you need money for a certain amount of time that you know when they're going to be making their decision and potentially when money might be coming to you if successful. So at some stage you need to write an application whether it is on a paper form or online. Firstly, don't worry. We know that it can be daunting but please don't worry. Most, almost all applications, they're wanting people to apply. Take your time and go through it step by step. What do they want? Do it together with somebody else if, if you can. Or see whether there's somebody that you know, either one of your existing members of staff, volunteers, or somebody else that you know who may have done this before and is willing to go through it with you. In almost all cases, they're not wanting to catch you out. So as I said, please don't worry. What does the funder want? Read the advice and ask if you have any questions. The Heritage Lottery Fund uh, do project inquiries where you can go with your idea and they can discuss it with you. It stops you wasting your time if it's not going to be relevant or there's going to be a, a, a big problem. But many funders will offer that. They have a chat, check that you're on the right lines and, and it is what they want and it, is, it will link with what you're applying for. And it's your opportunity to tell the potential funder what you're doing and how it will meet your objectives. What are you going to do? Why will it make a difference? Why, why now? And why are you the people to do the work? And what will the impact be? So this is the opportunity where you can sell yourself. And remember to tailor the bid to that particular application. You may have already put in a similar one elsewhere or you have your own idea, but make sure it is tailored to that particular project and that particular funder. All applications, all funding will be slightly different in what they're wanting, but often there are, there are five key things for your, for your bid, for your project, what you're wanting to do. There's a need, what you're wanting to do. What's the, what is the solution? What will be the impact of what you're doing? What is the budget? How much money do you need? And what is the added value? What is the, the, the benefits and the impact? 
So for instance, a number of years ago, uh, we did a project all about archives, crime and drama with the support of the, the Museums, Libraries and Archives Commission. The need was getting young people using the archives and also drama students wanted something to help them with their coursework and the, school, the secondary school wanted opportunities to work with the primary school. So our solution was a project where they looked at 19th century crime stories. The drama students would create dramas from this which would be professionally filmed with filmmakers. Joint working would happen between the secondary and uh, primary school on this topic and about local, uh, local history. The impact was the interconnected uh, work between the secondary and primary school children, getting them working together, and the drama GCSE students having really good coursework and benefiting from uh, working with professional filmmaker. We came with a budget, which was about £5,000, after we costed everything in. And I said the added value was uh, having lots of different people involved, different experiences, the GCSE students passing on some of their skills about drama to the primary school children. Uh, we got the experts in to help the students know how to make films. And the Youth Offending Service came to talk to the children about crime and the different attitudes to it and the different punishments and how that's changed over time. So this is Emma Hancocks, who is the county archaeologist, who has got quite a bit of experience of, of funding applications. So I thought I'd ask her for, for some tips and things from her experience. Um, so Emma, what experience do you have of funding applications? Well, yeah, I've been involved in quite a few over the years from sort of minor supporting roles, just helping uh, local groups or helping people like the Young Archaeologists Club to sort of uh, realise their aims and objectives to actually developing and managing uh, one or two heritage um, lottery funded projects that, and other funded projects as well. Um, the biggest of which was, I think, Ice Age, which was all told, including all the the um, other grants and the, the time in kind and everything was probably approaching somewhere sort of £200,000 sort of type of grant. And that was a huge project with a huge number of partners. And that was a really, really quite a challenging project to deliver. <laughs> What was it like the first few times you, you had to um, apply for funding and, and fill in forms? So it was a little bit daunting to start with because you feel like there's an awful lot of information that, that they're asking for and you're not entirely sure what, what people are actually asking for, what do they actually need. But actually, when you kind of get into it, it becomes it's quite easy, really. When you start thinking about it from the funder's perspective, you know, how are they how are they going to? choose what to fund uh it, it, it sort of it becomes quite easy quite quickly and there's always loads of people to advance to ask yeah. so i think the first thing that you really need to do before you even start thinking about funding is thinking about what you want to achieve what are your objectives who do you want to involve what do they want to get out of it and what what do you want the outcomes to be and then once you've clearly set what you want, then you look for your funders and see how what you want to achieve fits in with them and their ideas. I think that's a much better way around to doing it than thinking, oh, we'll apply to HLF, say, or with National Heritage Lottery, um, and then trying to fit into their object, starting with their objectives and then fitting your project around it. It's, it's easier if you start with what you want, because then you have a really clear idea and then you fit it into them. And you can take advantage of all the pre-application advice. Most funding bodies will give you advice before you apply. Um, so that because they want to give the money out, so that's what they're there for. So they want to know who to give the money. You know, um, they want to know that you are ticking their boxes and they'll help you as much as they possibly can because they want you to be successful and also looking at other projects that funders have funded so that will give you not just an idea of what the potential funding body likes to fund but it can also give you ideas about how to achieve your outcomes because you can see how other people have done things and think that would be absolutely perfect for us use that kind of model 
And the other thing is talk to everybody you possibly can right at that early stage. So if you see an example of another local group who've done something that's very similar to what you want to do, phone them up, go on there, find their website, send them an email, give them a call because they'll pretty much always want to tell you what they did, how it went, what worked, what didn't work. They might give you some ideas around things that that they really hadn't thought of at the start and then they realised they really wish they put more money into that because that actually worked really, really well. Or they might say, we didn't think about this money that we'd need for this and then we had to rejig our project because this money was needed. So it's a really good idea to talk to everybody you possibly can and also to get costs for everything, even if things that you don't think you might want, just try and get costs on everything from everybody because you'll you'll then be able to narrow down what you're going to fund it on. But don't make assumptions either about what things will cost because you might think, oh, well, we'll do this and that'll cost that. And then when you actually get into it, the other side of the project funding, you realise that there's a couple of other things associated with that that you need that you didn't cost in for. And the one thing I think if I could say one thing about projects like this that is always essential and everybody always says it, but it's absolutely true, is communicating and managing expectations throughout the lifetime of the project. Because every project that I've been involved in where parts of it haven't gone as well as they should have done and every project I've seen elsewhere that hasn't gone as well as it should have done the re the core reason behind that in one way or another is not communicating properly or not managing expectations so you deliver exactly what you said you were going to deliver but the but other people thought you were going to live, deliver something else so they see it as a failure when in fact you've delivered exactly what you said you were going to deliver because they hadn't quite understood what was coming their way so I think those two things throughout right and it's really critical right at the start when you're getting everything sorted and you're getting your money in place and you're talking to your funding bodies and you're talking to the public and the community about what they want but it is critical throughout the project as well to maintain that communication and manage those expectations right through from the start to the finish. Right, thank you very much Emma. The National Lottery Heritage Fund have a number of key things that they look at when they're assessing bids and even if you're applying for different funding it's useful to have a think about these. Now they, they do quite large projects so some of them may be a lot bigger than what you may be applying for but it's always useful looking at those. And I'll go into a bit more detail in the toolkit, I've only got a little bit of time now. But one of the things they look at is quality. Now, please don't be put off by that. I'm sure you all do things to the best of your ability, and that's mainly what HLF are wanting to know about, that, you, that they're going to be a, it's going to be a good product. And so you're just explaining what the output's going to be, what it's going to be like, and assuring them that it's going to be good, which I'm sure it would be. They look at public engagement and impact. They need to, need to know that the public is going to benefit, the public is going to know, and, and it's not just... We're giving you this money to do this little thing in this corner and nobody will know about. Quite a few projects fall down on public engagement because they think, oh yes, this is this project. Um, everybody knows that it's important maybe to save this building and they forget about this. Lots of people, lots of the funders will be thinking, who's going to benefit? Who's going to know about this? Who's going to be involved? With the finance, Make sure you've costed everything. How much money do you need? And make sure that you include everything, but all only what you absolutely need. So cost everything, what you need to do. Um, and also, what can you provide in kind? Is there any money that you can put towards which some people want? And also volunteer hours. Quite a few uh, organisations will say, well, uh, volunteer hours can be costed into it as in-kind contributions. Uh, for management, who's going to be looking after it? Particularly important if it's a very big project. Is it going to be a committee? Does everybody know their role? Is it going to be one person? And is there, are there plans if somebody um, left and moved on? Um, a timeline. Have you planned it out? Is it realistic? What needs to happen when? And just showing that you've thought about this, that you've sat down and know what you want to happen when, and it is realistic. Um, a legacy, what's going to happen at the end? So after the end of this money, is it all going to be forgotten about? Or a year's time, five years time, ten years time, 
Will there still be something carrying on? Will we still be able to use what they have, have funded? And also provide evidence of who you are, what you do, your track record, how many people come to you, things like that. Make sure that you sell yourself in any bid that you put in. This amazing montage was produced as part of a project moving to the city, which we did recently. It was funded, about £9,000, from the Arts Council England. So it's not just Heritage Lottery, there's all sorts of different funding, and, and arts is one place that you might want to investigate. We wanted to work with the local community, particularly black minority ethnic community, and uh, we worked with an artist who was very keen on uh, on helping people explore their heritage and also using photography as, as a means of engaging people. So we managed the project, we ran a few sessions about archives and then he did the other public engagement on our behalf and did some amazing work with people, took lots of photographs to help engage people, get people involved and as a result we had a display and uh, some, portrait, some large portraits which were collages made up of thousands of other portraits that he made as part of the project. Right, this is Nina O'Hare, who is one of our community project officers and has submitted a number of funding applications. So we thought we'd ask her for um, some tips and some information about from her experience. So Nina, you've, you've done a few applications, but what was it like the first couple of times you filled in applications? Yes, yeah, so um, the first few times it can be slightly overwhelming. Um, sometimes it can seem like you're not sure where to start. There's just, there can be lots of forms, there can be lots of things to read through. Um, and there may also be things you've not considered, and that can seem kind of slightly off-putting um, if you come across something in the application form and you think, oh, I've not thought about that before. Um, that's okay though, um, that's partly why it's in there, and you might find that actually that, that's useful and, and there will be guidance out there to help with that. So are there any key tips that you'd like to pass on, things that you've learned and you think would be very useful for other people to know? Uh, yeah, I think probably some of the, the main things I'd say is firstly, read all the guidance very carefully. Um, it seems like quite an obvious one, um, but there will be various guidance forms and read through them entirely. They will say in there what the funders want um, and the basis they're going to make their decision on. And that's really important to so make sure you've read all of that. Um, and the second one is to remember who you're writing for. Um, you may know why your, well, I hope you know why your project's so fantastic and why it'd be really great, um, but the funders won't necessarily know that, so you really need to spell it out to them. And make sure it's really clear that you've not overlooked anything that you assume they know. Don't assume they know, tell them. Um, and think about what they value the most, the aspect of the project they might be interested in the most may not be the same as yours. So remember what they've said in the guidance about the basis they'll be making decisions on and try and bring that out most in the application because it's ultimately them who are making the decision, not you. And um, so yeah, I think they're probably the kind of the key tips that I give to anyone. Just give it a go. Um, the worst that can happen is is you, you have to try again, um, which is not the end of the world. Going through the process of writing a funding application makes you really think about the project. And it can be really useful to think about aspects that you, you've perhaps not considered before. And um, they'll be in there for a reason and they will be useful things to think about. So, yeah, so give it a go and, and don't be too daunted by it. Thank you. So a few, I suppose, confessions about uh, uh, mistakes that either we've made or other people have, have done. Just to try to reassure you and you know, think it happens to everyone and just thinks a few things to bear in mind. Um, one is that you might find out after applying that you weren't eligible. Just double check any, any uh, guidelines just to make sure that you can apply for the funding. One big one is that we know people have assumed that their need was obvious. The building needed money to help restore it or else the project looked brilliant and it, and it would be really good to spend that money on it but they didn't look as much into the other parts of the bid, other things that were required, and so it might have fallen down on, on another aspect. Um, costings may be a little bit wrong. Maybe it's, it sounds a bit too much over the top, or you put too much extra in above what they might consider was reasonable. 
Or sometimes a key person leaves, you'll part way through doing the bid. And if it's just one person, if they, if they leave, that can cause a few problems if somebody trying to get up to speed. So if you can do it more than one person, that can help. So why did they fail? Again, this may help in, in you creating your own bid, but also reassuring you that it may not be nothing personal. One reason is there might be too many bids for a pot of money and the people deciding may see that there's a better project elsewhere. Or sometimes when you get feedback, and it is always good to ask for feedback if you have applied for money and you don't get it, it almost sounds like it's a toss of a coin. Lots of great projects, another day you might have got it. So just keep trying. It might also be not what they're looking for. So try and find out what sort of things are they wanting to fund or what might hit the mark with what they're looking to do, if you can. Or it might not meet the criteria. Um, it may be that you didn't answer a key, uh, some key questions or give key information or evidence. Again, assuming that the uh, benefits and the need were obvious. Um, so make sure you go over the form, make sure you've included everything and just sell yourself and put all the evidence you can. Similarly, you, may, you might assume that the funder knows about your organisation so you don't particularly explain because you think, oh yes, they know, they, they'll know who we are. Either they might not be able to take that into account or the person looked at it might not have done. Or sometimes it's not seen as value for money. Have a look at how much money are you asking for? What is the benefit? How many people are going to, to benefit. I've known one local group ask for several thousands of pounds, but it was for a tiny village that only a very small number of people would be impacted and the feedback came back was they felt that more people for that money should be involved. And don't be afraid to ask for help, either from other local museums, maybe they've got other experience that they can give you a few tips, and quite often people are willing to share their ideas. And also, do you know people who can help outside of your organisation who might be willing to pass on some of their experience if they've applied for funding? I'd also remember there's the West Midlands Museum Development who can offer advice. Check out their website and get in touch if you think that they can help you with your fundraising bid. This has been a Worcestershire Archive and Archaeology Service production supported by Historic England.